Welcome back after the break. Uh, just before we went for our break, we were we began looking at chapter nine about money, and um, we were looking at. I asked this question, you know, how do you know you have love for money? So many of you uh, shared your thoughts. Um, you know, we're ready to do anything for money when you're holding up money. You know, sometimes. Um, we give more importance to people who give us big offering compared to people who give us, you know, small offerings. Okay. And sometimes we're willing to compromise our honesty, our integrity in doing things that are wrong, um, dishonest, just to raise money in the name of God, in the name of ministry. Okay. Uh, also, sometimes we connect ourselves with bigger churches with uh, uh, greater men and women of god bigger men and women of god who are famous uh, so that you know we can uh, get larger contributions okay so all of these are some things that will show us are indicators that show us that we have uh, the love for money okay uh, also when we keep money for ourselves and not willing to give it out to help others and to minister to others okay um now some people join christian ministry because they think they can it's an easy way to make a lot of money right because when you have a church you know all you need to do is preach a sermon on sunday do some house visits people will give you money easy way to get money which is a very sad way of thinking sad way of getting into ministry also, some of them think that when, you know, why is why do they think ministry is an easy way of getting money? Why do some of them think that ministry is an easy way of getting money? No need to work hard. Yes. Nobody's setting you some goals. You have to do that. Your, your own church, you do what you want just easily. What else? How is an easy way to get money? If you have your own ministry, Christian NGO, church, come on, foreign funds, right? You can write to foreigners, uh, you know, Christian organization and churches abroad and give them your sad story, how you are from India and they all think India is a very, very poor country, <laughs> you know, and they just send money, okay? Um, and sometimes we even invite, you know, overseas uh, worship leaders, ministers, and we say we'll do crusades for you, we'll organize um, uh, programs for you here. And then when we do that, we can even cheat them. You know, the cost is so much. If it's if it the whole cost comes up to one lakh, we tell them three lakh. You know, because they just believe anything and everything that we. Um, say and so that way is we take away huge money sometimes we have christian organizations we say we are having a orphanage or a de-addiction center or for poor people you know poor children whatever you know we're doing this and we collect funds but we can use that funds that come in for our own selves and all this is dishonest and god is watching okay um uh, we also think that um yeah, we also to start branches asking contribution. Yes, we want to start branch churches. We and we also ask contributions. Yes, right. Um, we need to sow spiritually in people uh, and let them give that. Gi let them give us materially. Okay. So as ministers of God, it's important for us to think how we can sow into the lives of people how we can be good shepherds by leading them beside water you know greener pastures feeding them well feeding their soul when we feed them you know um, spiritually they will just pour into our lives god will cause them to just pour into our lives and to take care of the material needs our material needs and also the um uh, the church so we need to sow faithfully sow consistently and also teach people to give into the kingdom of uh, god okay um 
So that is very, very important that we think how we can help so into their lives, how we can feed them, how we can teach them, how we can minister to them, how they, we can get them into their calling, their destiny, God-given destiny, calling uh, assignment for their lives, how they can, we can help them fulfill God's plan and purpose, how we can extend God's kingdom. Even as we do this, you know, God will, enable, uh, will pour into our lives okay god is not our, any man's debtor he will just pour when he pours into our lives our cup will be pressed down shaken and overflowing okay because uh the psalmist says one thing i have seen the righteous i've never seen the righteous begging for food okay so you don't have to beg from anyone should we be dependent on foreign support why some of you are saying no why do you think we should not be dependent on foreign support? We as Indians, why do you think we should not be dependent on foreign support? We need to depend on God, okay? Come on, give me some answers. On online students, why shouldn't we depend on foreign support? Those of us who are based here in India, or even other parts of the world. Why should we not depend on foreign support? God is able to fulfill our need. Okay. Paramita says there was this. Okay. I think she's just uh, giving her the son. Okay. Why shouldn't we depend on foreign support? We have enough wealth within our own nation, right? Uh, Andrew says God provides. If he wouldn't provide, he wouldn't call himself Jehovah Jireh. Wow, what a statement. Yes. Okay, good statement. Thank you, Andrew. Um, you know, God has given us enough wealth uh, to, you know, um, reach out to our nation. But what is important is that we have a right heart, a right mindset to tap into it and to use the funds in the right way. Uh, and to do the things that God wants us to do in the right way, with honesty and integrity, okay? Um, what do you think in the villages and smaller towns, do they have the kind of wealth to support themselves? Do you see yes? I think yes. You know what they did in Mizoram? Mizoram is way up in the north of India. You know, every time the women come for... Bible study or worship, they bring one a handful of rice and they sell that rice. And with that rice, they have supported missionaries all over India and the world. Can you imagine just a handful of rice? I think that's such a powerful testimony to what God can do. He, when he can multiply the five loaves and two fishes, why not on small handful of rice that women will bring? That is all because they grow rice. You know, there's no way they can get economy up there in the hills. You know, everything is so expensive there because they don't have any factories, nothing. They can't grow anything. It's all hilly terrain. Uh, they grow rice. They just bring a handful of rice and that they sell it and they support their pastors and missionary and do mission work. Amazing. Okay. Uh, Kofi says, God will supply our needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Amen. Okay. So what do you think... Uh, the the towns and the villages in india should do if they don't have the resources and the finances who should help them i think they are quite sufficient in themselves to help themselves but if they want to get started who should help them who do you think should help them we only yes it should be us right as um, as city churches who have enough, we can get them started, support them, and get them to a place where they will be able to self-support uh, them, okay? So God has given us enough resources, opportunities, where we can tap and get the resources, the money that we need for our um, ministry, but we need to be intelligent in the way we do it, do it honorably, uh, so that, you know, uh, we will receive God's provision and abound in the work that he has asked us to uh, do, okay? So Paramita says, uh, let me read what Paramita says. Um, she says that there was this pastor, 
he shared, the pastor shared this incident. He, along with his wife, used to minister in a house church. And they just pray and worship, and they don't take any offering. This disappointed the pastor. This place is far away from his house. There's financial crisis, but still traveled, even leaving his children. OK? Just pray and worship. They don't take offering. OK, so there's another pastor who's disappointed. Maybe he didn't get no, any no, offering. No, ma'am, uh, there is a second part of this question. Uh. OK, my question is, was this pastor wrong to accept offerings or the people coming to the house church should have provided offerings? Can you just give me the whole scenario? Explain it. I'm not able to understand, Paramita. Mm -hmm. uh, this was the same pastor. He was like, uh, why they are not, uh, um, I mean, why they are not giving offerings? So the, a pastor and his wife have started a church, and they don't no, collect no, offerings. They have not started this church. OK, so pastor goes to some other church to minister. Yes, ma'am. And uh, they in that church, they don't give any offerings. Yes, ma'am. So ma this, this was just a house church. They don't do any sort of offerings. Ah, this is a house church. So he goes, this pastor goes there to minister. Right? That's what you're saying. Yes, ma'am. OK, and then he, the people come into house church. Um, the question was, was this pastor wrong to accept, uh, expect offerings? Yeah, he was wrong to expect offerings. He's not going there to preach and teach to peddle God's word. God's word is not to earn money. God's word is to, to build people, to strengthen people, to edify them, you know, to share the gospel for life transformation. Uh, it is not for us to earn our living, but you know, but God is will provide. So even if they did not provide him offerings, he should not be upset because this is anyway just a house church. He should just have gone to bless them, right? What do you what do, what do the others think? So this pastor who went to minister in this house church, and he did not uh, get offerings. So the question is, was this pastor wrong to expect offerings? What do you think? Was he wrong to expect offerings? Can others give you yes, a suggestion? Yes, he was wrong to. Yes, he, he was, was wrong, wrong to. Because Jesus has given us freely. Jesus said, I've given you freely, freely receive and freely give. Amen. So he should not have accepted. Yeah. Yeah, so she's quoting from the Bible. Great. Freely you have received freely give that's the final statement thank you get Ruth. yes so the people coming to this church should have provided offerings what do you think should they have provided offerings no even if they did not give a cup of tea or water i don't think they did anything wrong <laughs> you know okay and we should not expect we just go to preach and teach god's word thank you paramita for sharing that uh, scenario okay what are some things that we shouldn't do um, you know, as ministers of God, what shouldn't we do? You know, um, sometimes we tell people, you know, I'm operating this church, this ministry by faith. Um, but, you know, there I have so many needs. When you're living by faith, why should you state your needs? Only if the person asks, hey, what are your needs? How can I help? You say it. But, you know, uh, they indirectly hint that, you know, hey, I need help. Okay, that is wrong. Another thing is, you know, trying to get people to contribute by saying it as a prayer request. You know, saying we have a prayer request. This is the need. You know, pray that God would give. But indirectly, we're actually asking people. Okay, if you want to ask people directly, just tell them directly. Hey, this is a need. Would anyone like to contribute? And then say, if you want, you know, just pray about how much God is needing you to contribute. Or just say that, you know, you just pray that God would stir the hearts of people. Okay. Um, sometimes also people, what do they do? What are the some things that they do wrong to get money for their ministry? What are some things that they do wrong or they should not be doing to get money for their ministry? Come on. 
they go behind big politicians, businessmen, they do what they want them to do, say what they want to do so that, you know, they can provide for them. What else do we do? As, what, do what else do pastors do to get money from their congregation members? Come on, what did pastors do to get money from their congregation members? Huh? They may uh, mix up uh, their uh, money, means like uh, if they're doing something for church, they cost uh, this much, but they will show the more bill of that. Okay. So from that, what do pastors do when they are come on the pulpit when they speak about the sun? What do they? They ask money with wrong motives. Okay, they force people to give, right? They force people to give. They say, if you don't give, what happens? God is going to punish you. God is not going to bless you. Only when you give, you will receive. And then they'll say, I prayed, and God is saying, all those who are wearing gold earrings, so remove your gold earrings and give. You know, all those who have uh, uh, 500 rupees in your pocket, you have to give that. You know, or if it's a poor church, all those who have 100 rupees, they'll know at least some people have 100 or 50 rupees, you have to give that. Okay. So that is all manipulating people. Um, uh, Kofi says they're selling things in church. Yes, okay, they sell things in church. Okay. What else we shouldn't do? We should we should not emotionally manipulate people to give money. Okay. Just share the need, okay, and leave people to uh give. Anyone here has tithing in the old testament? Is it applied in the new testament? Yes, this applied in the new testament. Uh, Jesus says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, give to God what belongs to God, give to God what belongs to him, okay, for the work of the extension and the kingdom, what else? Okay, um, anyone here has done fundraising before, how have you gone about doing fundraising? Yes, Sister Gertrude? My question is, anyone has involved in fundraising before and how you've gone about it? What are some of the things you have done? No one? Online students? Sister, I had a, a ministry for children. I, uh, I used to get a sponsorship for each child, often child. And I used to collect money and personally go and give it to the parents. And uh, I had around 16 children sponsored. But during the COVID time, I stopped. Okay. So how yeah. did you uh, how did you manage uh, how did you manage those funds? Transparency. What what are, how were transparent you were? What are the things you did? Yes, I uh, whatever I received, I gave it to the. Uh, children, I brought books for them. I paid their yearly fees. And uh, those who are with single parent, I helped the parents with the amount. So all that I received, I gave it. Plus, I made my children also sponsor them. Okay, so how did you, those who sponsored them, how did you, uh, you know, keep uh, accountability? How did you maintain those? I, uh, I used to send their record of studies and I used to update them how they are progressing in their studies, what is happening. I to uh, even uh, give them the photo uh, copies of the checks that I've given them, the money that I received. So it was a very transparent uh, uh, dealing, financial dealing I had. So, you know, and uh, when last time I was in a meeting, a pastor said, that though people brought objection, people were not happy with your ministry. God was pleased uh, with your ministry. Okay, thank you, Gertrude. I think that's very important to be transparent, to be accountable to those who are giving you the money. Anyone else? Yes. Yeah. So uh, I had a personal uh, Christian YouTube channel. 
so from my my channel uh, i posted a video to support the poor people at the karuna time so uh, many of them helped me so uh, i took that money and buy the rice bags for pastors and i took that money for for uh, buying the blankets and clothes for widows and poor people and we used to collect the money and make the food for one day meal and we distributed on the christmas time so, good uh, but how did you maintain accountability so for all this money and uh, uh, my father uh, he will take care about everything so he will collect the money and he will show you all the things what what we so okay anyone else thank you cyril right thank you huh? let's see yes anyone else yes Hmm. Uh, I arranged a meeting in our church and collected money. I, I only collected money and uh, uh, arranged everything. And, uh, that meeting all finished. After that, I wrote everything in my uh, notebook and uh, I presented to every believer. His expenses there and everything, whatever left, everything. Very good. So you had a meeting in the church. After the meeting, he presented all the accounts to the people. That's good. Now, what we do at APC, anyone can go online from any part of the world and check you know, what are the contributions have come, what is spent for missions, what is spent for this program, that program. Transparency is there. There is auditors who do our auditing. Everything is very transparent. Anyone can raise questions and ask questions. I think that is how we need to be uh, transparent. Suru says, ma'am, in our area of any ministry is constructing a church, the people of that congregation will go to collect funds from branch churches or other ministry churches is it correct to collect funds like that? What do you? What is your answer for Cyril's uh, query? He says, in his area, if any ministry is constructing a church, the people of that congregation will go to collect funds from branch churches or other ministry churches. Is it correct to collect funds like that? What do you all think? Is it OK to collect funds like that? Yes, if it's useful, it's good. OK, we can collect the funds, but what should you do? How do you be faithful? You only use for that purpose, OK? But also, you get them to put it in the account, not in your personal account. Open a separate account just for this church building fund and put it there and show them how it has been use lucy says yes we can ask for uh, money yes uh, just to share my experience i was in a ministry where um, we started a new project for um, uh, teens in schools and we were supposed to raise funds so we had another uh, organization help us they would give 50 percent and uh, you know we had to raise the rest 50 percent so if you raise we raise 1,000 rupees, they will give us matching funds, 1,000 rupees. If we raise 50,000, they'll give us 50,000. And I just don't like asking people for money. I don't even ask like asking my parents for money. This is asking people was a very, very difficult situation for me. So what, uh, as a leader, what I did was I just, uh, you know, uh, sent emails and I uh, just gave out letters. And I didn't follow up. I didn't even ask them whether they read my email, whether they, that time in, in, in those days, there was no WhatsApp and uh, mobile and all. I just asked them if they, I don't even ask them if they received my email, if they uh, received my letter, I just pray. You know, and God used to give us, God would just steer the hearts of people to contribute. And we used to get that money and we used to show it to the, uh, organization that was supporting us and we were getting 50 50 50 percent from them of uh, the matching funds of course it was not coming into our account it was going into the ministry account okay so that was one thing another thing was when um, when i was in children's ministry again children's ministry i never raised funds for anything 
but one point of time we wanted to raise uh, ask children to contribute to provide for um, a missionary organization so we collected uh, money and uh, you know uh, whatever money was collected uh, we did a transfer to that organization and i took a snapshot of the transfer uh, uh, that we uh, that we made and i sent it as an email and as a print out to all the parents with a thank you letter so they saw how much we received and how much of money that was sent even when a team member say that hey you know one of our team members is getting married or they're having a child's birthday they've invited us for a party can we all pool in money and can you buy some gift i don't encourage even that i don't deal with money very very minimal when it comes i handle these only these two times when i have dealt with money otherwise i don't deal with money because i don't want to give room for you know for me to get into any wrong temptations and give into wrong temptations so i just as far as possible keep away from money i tell people no we are not going to collect the funds no collecting money if you want to give gifts please give your own uh, gifts because then then later on they can say hey we gave so much what is the sun why was this that all becomes a problem it becomes can even become a problem in the team so just don't and deal with any money affairs i try to keep it very very minimal as um, possible okay um another the few things that we need to keep in mind is when you know when you're doing uh, uh, projects and you have people who are supporting you other churches other organizations that are supporting you you know state the money that was spent don't double your bill don't say you know tell the vendors okay how much was uh, the cost thousand rupees for chairs don't say right two thousand rupees how much was it for uh, sound system it was ten thousand don't tell them to write twenty thousand okay that is actually dishonesty and that is cheating so be honest with uh, you know with the money that was spent uh, maintain transparency and uh, you know so that you can fully show the organization that is supporting you how much you really spent okay now if you're spending some money okay um don't use that money for your own business if you're having um you know you're collecting money for a crusade or for your orphanage uh, suppose you run an orphanage okay and you're running a church and you want to have a big crusade now you have some foreign funds coming in for your orphanage because people love to sponsor for orphanage now don't use that orphanage money for can we use that orphanage money for crusade can we use orphanage money for crusade no we can't use it we can't tell can't tell the sponsors we use it for crusade because the children were singing we had the children's choir who were singing in the crusade you know we had the children singing so we use that orphanage money should can we use that orphanage money no if you want to use the orphanage money for crusade what should we do if you want to use the orphanage money that the sponsors are sending for your crusade or for some other program what should you do you should ask them ask the sponsors for permission right if it is permissible they give the permission you can go ahead also secondly if there is legally if it is right legally that's not right you can't use money coming in for christian ngos orphanages for crusades for a building um, you know churches and all all that is illegal so you need to also check whether it is legal for you to do it and you need to go ahead with um, that okay um uh, i already mentioned do not rob overseas ministers okay when you have overseas ministers and you are there coming to do some crusade some ministry some program you know state the actual facts of the money that was spent if you state something that is extra what are you what are you doing you're cheating them right and you will be called a liar and a thief okay and that is um, wrong okay uh, why is it wrong to do that why is it wrong is 
Yeah, it is basically you're charging them extra, which was not, you know, what you have not spent. Okay. Uh, can we mix ministry and business? Some of you here are also liking to do business and ministry. Can we be mix business and ministry? No. Why shouldn't we mix ministry and business? Sometimes Christian ministers say, hey, we are using the tithes and the extra money that is coming in. We are using it as investment. Right? So when we invest, you know, we can get more money. So then we can think of building, extending our church, buying things, uh, you know, making an, uh, making our church AC or buying some LED screens and things like that. Do you think that is the right way of going about it? Why? Paramita says no. Lucy says no. Why? What, what, what happens if the investment goes on a loss? Exactly. What happens if the investment goes on a loss, right? Um, we can't do that. You know, can we use it to use uh, for starting a business? No? If your wife or your children want to start a business can, and you are a pastor, can you use that money for starting a business? No? Okay. Uh, if somebody in your church says, you know, you want... They want to start a business and they say, you know, Pastor, why don't you invest? Why don't you invest church money? Uh, I will give you 75% of the uh, profit that I make. What do you think? Is that right or wrong? Wrong. Why? What if the business goes, ends up in a loss? You not only lose the relationship of the person, you not only lose the credibility you have, people in your church can be very upset and you also lose a lot of money and it will affect your ministry. Okay. Um, now, if God is leading you to start a church and also start a vocational training, start a school, start something else, uh, was it, is it? can we mix the church uh, accounts and this accounts together? No, we need to keep that very, very separately. Keep everything separately. Okay, handle finances very, very uh, separately of each project that you are uh, doing. Okay. Um, another important principle that we need to learn is that, you know, God's house is not a place for selling right for merchandise okay uh, so sometimes what happens is like i think kofi mentioned you know we can use some of the uh, church things like a pastor writes books or sermons or you know if the church produces a song we can sell those cds for a higher rate can we do that if the cost of the book is 100 rupees for printing we sell it for 300 or 350 or 500. Can we do that? Why? Greed, okay. That is actually cheating the people, right? What did Jesus do when he went to the temple? When he cleared the temple, what did he do? What did he do when he went to the temple and he saw everyone was selling things there? He turned the tables upside down. He, he turned the tables the upside down, yes. What else? He cleared the temple, right? And what did he say? You made the temple a marketplace and a, a den of thieves, right? See, he says, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you made it a den of Thieves. Why does he call the people who are selling their thieves? They were cheating. How were they cheating? If it was 100 rupees, they were selling it for 150 or 200. Now, what happens was, you know, when the, the Feast of the Passover or, you know, when they were celebrating various festivals, people used to come from all over 
uh, other cities to Jerusalem to celebrate these festivals. And when they travel and come, you know, they come straight away to the temple. They don't go to the market. They think it's anyway they can buy all the birds or the, you know, the, the grain offerings, the animal, which is sold near the temple. Okay. And these people who are selling it used to actually cheat these innocent people who are coming from far away. So they used to take extra money to make extra profit. And Jesus was angry, first of all, that they made the house of God a place of marketplace, then it's a house of prayer. And also he says that, you know, he calls it a den of thieves because they were cheating people. So a lesson for us to learn is, you know, when we are selling things in the church, you know, it's important that we don't take extra money from people. Okay, take the exact right amount. Then some of you can question and say, you know, when we have these uh, sales where, you know, sometimes people have sales in their churches so that they can raise funds for building project. So if the cake cost one piece of the cake is five rupees, they sell it for 10 rupees. Do you think that is right? Lucy says, ma'am, in church we celebrate Harvest Festival and they sell the offerings we give at double rates. So is it wrong then? What do you think? Usually in the Harvest Festival, I think what they do is they say, you know, this basket costs 100 rupees. There's some vegetables. The cost of this, the fruits or vegetable or this item is 100 rupees. If you want to bid, you can bid. Some people will say 200, someone has 300, someone has 400, someone has 500. Then, you know, after 500, nobody calls. They say 500 once, 500 twice, 500 thrice, and they give it away. Okay. So in that case, they are actually doing what? They're not cheating people. They're saying, hey, the cost is 100 rupees, but you can bid. But if you're having a sale like this, um, where you're selling food stuff, you know, and you're saying, hey, it's for to raise money. So the, the cake piece is 5 rupees, but they're charging 10 rupees. Do you want to contribute? You can contribute. I think that is okay. Selling, uh, Deepu says, selling prayed oils for 6,000 rupees, but the cost is below 100 rupees. So when you sell anointing oil for 100, it's 100 rupees, the cost is 100 rupees, but you're selling it for 6,000 rupees. Do you think that is... I think that is really cheating people. I don't think you should. I think if they say the cost is 100 rupees, you can pay 200 or 300. It's good. 6,000 is a ripoff, is cheating people. What do the others think? Any thoughts on that? What Deepu has said? Sorry to hear that, Deepu. Come on. What do the others think? That's cheating, okay? Thank you, all uh, in-person students. I know it's a fact. Yes, people. What about the online students? It's wrong. Anyone? I get through this asking. Does anyone buy it? <laughs> people, does anyone buy? We must pray over the oil ourselves for anointed oil. <laughs> Sanjay says that we need to pray over the oil so that it can be anointed. Esther says it's not fair. <laughs> Yes, ma'am, innocent people, yeah, I think innocent people just pay and buy it. It's so sad. They think if they can get breakthroughs, they can, people are so innocent. That's so true and it's so sad. Yes, it's not fair and it is wrong. We need to really pray for whoever is doing this, you know, that God will speak to them, right? Okay, uh, just before this end of this lesson, uh, it's important that we guard ourselves against greed, right? Is it important to guard ourselves against greed? Yes, yes or no? Yes, so how do we guard ourselves against greed? What should we do? Come on. Huh? What should we do to guard against greed? Paul tells Timothy, godliness with contentment is great gain you need to if you're godly you need to be content with what you have how can you guard yourself with greed can we have some answers please how can we be content and how can we guard ourselves against greed
by praying about it. Okay, we yes, we need to pray about it. If we have a love for money, be happy. Lucy says, be happy with what you have. Yes. Okay, focus on God, His Word. Ask God's Word to cleanse us, uh, confess our sin to God, remind ourselves what the Word of God uh, says. Proverbs 4.23 says, keep vigilant, watch over your heart. That's where life starts. Okay. Can greed come in? Even if you don't love money, can greed come in? Yes. So you need to set some boundaries. Like I set some boundaries for myself. I will not collect money. I will not go, you know, do any fundraising. You know, I will not ask people for money. Okay. Whoever wants to give, even if they want to give, you go directly, do online, whatever. Put it in the offering. Give it to the church. Go to the church office. Or even if they say, hey, you know, I'm not able to go and uh, to church. I want to give this money. I say, please give a check in the name of you know, whatever organization or son, I will pass on your uh, check. Uh, Deepu says, stay away from involving uh, in the money transactions. Yes, stay away from money transactions. What else? We need to be satisfied. Okay. Satisfied and happy with God, what people are giving to us. Don't be demanding. Don't be expecting. You know, uh, don't expect huge offering. Don't force people. Don't condemn people if they're not giving. Don't say God's curse is going to come upon you. You know, um, don't curse them and scare people to give. Okay. Uh, what else? Be happy. Okay. Uh, and don't and be satisfied with the lifestyle that you are living. Okay. Sometimes when you're getting more finances, more money. You know, we want bigger cars, bigger homes. We want to live a lavish lifestyle as ministers of God using all church money. And that is very, very uh, wrong. Okay. And if you're doing that, we need to ask God to change our heart. And we need to know that greed and all of these um, uh, sins can come in very, very slowly and subtly without us even knowing okay before even we know it we are deep into it we can't get out of it we are all we have already gone so deep that we have sinned so it's important to check our lives and our hearts daily and it's important more than that to keep boundaries for ourselves i have put boundaries for certain things in my life and i think we need to keep boundaries and think about boundaries before we get into those temptations okay any questions The last point is um, give financially into other ministers or other ministries. One way to overcome greed and to keep ourselves from the love of money is to give money to others. When you give money, it's very, very easy. To, it's very easy to give money to others, right? Yes. <laughs> it's not easy to give money to others. When we give money to others, we are you know, um, checking on our own lives, we are overcoming the love of money, we are overcoming greed. It's very painful to give, but it also is going to bless others, and that is what God wants us to uh, do. So the best way to keep our hearts pure and free from the love of money or to be controlled by it is to give into other people's life, give to other ministries, you know, um, and we need to be a river and not a lake. What happens when you're a lake? A lake or a pond? What happens when you're a lake or a pond? You're stagnant. You're stagnant. When you're stagnant, you're breeding all kind of mosquitoes, all kind of uh, insects, all kind of unwanted weeds that grow. But if you're a river, what happens? You're just flowing. So be a river. Don't be a lake where you say, hey, give, 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 and keep and hold on everything. That becomes greed, and greed leads you into all kind of sin, but be a river where you are flowing and giving into others' lives and ministry. Okay? Any questions? Any questions? How will we know if someone is giving money for church 
what is their uh, mindset behind that like some politicians and some businessmen they used to give funds for church and that all so is it for good mindset of from bad minds how do you judge people and their mindset when they giving especially rich people and uh, politicians yes, what did we learn the previous chapter don't judge who are we to judge they are accountable before god if they putting things in the offering they are just putting things in the offering box if they giving to the church they giving don't think whether it's black money white money what money you know uh, but if you know they is coming and telling you and they saying this then you have the right to say and teach them and help them okay uh if they saying pastor we are giving this money this is black money you know we are giving it to the church please take and use it um and bless me so that my business grows then you can say then you can teach them in a in a loving way but if they are putting the money then without us knowing then we can't question their motives they are accountable to god they know what to judge good question anyone else has any questions we have two more lessons uh, we'll finish it uh, next week next friday is our last class right yeah i saw some ministries uh, in the matter of account they are actually too much transparent okay it's like uh, what they are getting on sunday offering they are uh, mm, they are telling in announcement only what they are getting so it is like that has to be uh, like fully transparent to you also it is good or not what do you all think fully transparent is it good or not is saying some churches they will fully transparent they even say how many of how much offering they get on sunday the tithe is come or not who gave or not they are announcing everything lucy says it's good how much tithe comes in how many how much came to offering how many came for mission work this work is it good to announce those things sister i feel as long as they are not uh, praising anybody's name and saying so and so has contributed so much offering i think it is good that they be transparent in uh, what they have received It's glorifying god yes i think it's good it's good as long as yes you are not saying this person gave so much that person gave so much you know yeah i think it's a good thing to and uh, the those transgenders are there transgender transgenders okay okay they do those business like okay transgenders do business so can we take offering from them so their business is not good it's a bad business they do but they have a, a godly i mean that god uh, respect all can we take money from them? i mean the offering So when they give you in a hand, you're saying or put in the offering box? Put anyways. Okay, when transgenders, then they put offering in the offering box. They come to your church. They put offering in the offering box. Can we take that offering? Can we accept that offering? Yes, we can. Because another businessman can be a businessman, can be doing also living a lot of sin. doing a lot of things in the illegal way to get money and he can be putting the money but we won't judge him we think he's a businessman we see him in being very honest and nice but who knows from where how he's getting his money we can't judge somebody like that right who are we to judge yes so that offering is about they giving it to god right so that's why god they are finally accountable to god how they get earn that money but it's important also for us to teach them from the pulpit sermon should be based on like this money how we earn how we generate income how we need to be honest in uh, and integrity in how we need to earn money in righteousness and holiness yes yeah any other questions can you give him the mic please just before he says that today uh, evening i will uh, post the last assessment um and uh, yeah 
So you can uh, submit the assessment by next Thursday. Today I'll post the last assessment. You can submit it by next Thursday. And next Friday we'll complete the last two lessons. Yes. If anyone is doing ministry, you're only involved in ministry only. So how he will fulfill his needs? He should use that money which comes in offering or what? Yes. A worker is worth his wages. So in your work, you receive wages from your ministry. But even when you use that money, you need to know that it's tight money, you're accountable to God and how you use it. Not lavishly spending for your greed, but for your need. He should set a boundaries or what? Yes, it's important. You know, uh, you need to tell the church, hey, I'm using so much for children's, this one, house rent, uh, for what are the things you're using, for travel, everything should be very clear and transparent and anyone can question you. And you need to get um, the church to endorse that you can use all of this money, so much money for all of these various uh, needs of yours. And if the church says we can't provide for your, uh, uh, for your TV subscription, or for your mobile subscription, you can't use it, you know, like that. Yeah. Can one start a ministry without finances? The question is, can one start a ministry without finances? It's You can start, but it's hard to run out. Um, yes, we can start ministries um, slowly, and you can, you know, ask God to provide, and God will provide, yes. I think we run out of time. Maybe next. Okay, quickly. Um, why did Elisha refuse the offering from Naaman? Why did Elisha refuse the offering when Naaman, Naaman gave him? Uh, and, and Gehazi, his servant, took the offering. I think Elisha would have heard clear instructions from God. Don't take it from Naaman. That is why he refused the offering. Yes. Okay, we'll stop here. Uh, Lucy, can we discuss the question number seven, assessment three? I'll discuss it over the uh, stream, uh, you know, chat, so you all can discuss it with me there. Okay, we run out of time. Thank you, everyone, for uh, joining class. Have a blessed weekend. Next week will be our last time, class. Thank you very much.